Hello, my name is Lukman, and I've always been passionate about doing projects that are positive for the development of Nigeria, and I've been lucky enough to be surrounded by like-minded people. In October 2012, I was invited to join the Nigerian Leadership Initiative. And after those classes, a couple of us dedicated our weekends and went to schools in Lagos and taught children about their civic responsibilities and leadership using Nigeria's history as an example. So before this project, I was personally embarrassed about how little I knew about Nigeria's history. But what we came to see in some of these schools was sometimes even more embarrassing. <laughs> I remember a class where we asked them who Namdia Zikwe was. And somebody confidently raised up their hand and said that Namdia Zikwe owns an airport. So after this project, I went on a personal journey across Nigeria, talking to a variety of different people. I talked to some people who influenced the history of Nigeria. I talked to people who had personal stories and experiences from the earlier days of Nigeria. And I talked to some people that were just very knowledgeable about the history of Nigeria. So yes, we talked about the history of Nigeria, but we also talked about the cultures, the values, and the patriotism that Nigeria witnessed in their earlier days. Us at We Picture Nigeria, we truly believe that for us youth to be able to influence and to change the future of Nigeria, we have to understand where we came from so we don't make the same mistakes. So this is the first episode of the series of my documentary across Nigeria. I hope you enjoy it. We celebrated our independence 1st of October, 1960. All over the country, people were happy because the political leaders cooperated with one another and they worked together and planned all the activities and planned everything for the independence of the country. So their followers, but with them, they were happy, there were excitement all over. Everybody was happy that we are now independent. The interesting thing, we went to the United Nations a day after the independence. I was one of those people that accompanied him. We went there, the Prime Minister addressed the United Nations General Assembly. He was speaking sense. He was realistic, he was responsible. And at the end of his address to the United Nations, the whole members of the assembly rose up and they gave him a standing ovation. He said we had no aggressive intention. In spite of our size and population, we have no aggressive intention will treat all countries big and small as our equals and will cooperate with them in order to promote the interest of Africa. That was Tafa Baliwa. Nigeria has suffered a great serious setback in terms of patriotism. Nigeria of pre-independence era, the people, were more patriotic than the Nigerians of today. The Nigerian leaders, to my understanding, all of them, Dr. Namdi Azikwe, Chief Awolo, Sardauna, Tapab Alewa, Mana Amini Kanu, J.S. Sarka, all of them, in spite of their political differences and sometimes religious and tribal differences, were ought to at any one time prepared to put their, the, the national interest above their personal, tribal or religious interests. They were at all times prepared to cooperate with one another in order there to move the country forward. 
These were great men who went into politics to serve, but not to be served, to give, but not to take. Samadhi Bello, Samadhi Chapap Oliva, and the Tomaikal Opera. The Tomaikal Opera was the premier of Eastern Nigeria, leader of NCNC, junior partner in the Federal Coalition Government. You know who Tabab Aliwa was and Sardona. Three of them wielded enormous power because Tapawa and Michael Opara run the federal government. Sardona run the northern Nigeria, which is the biggest part, and also has very strong influence on Tapawa because he is from his party and he's, he's, he was his deputy in the party. And yet, by the time the three of them died, no, none of them had a house of his own that he built for himself as a result of the position he was occupying. Sardona had his own house, mud house. Still, if you go to Sokoto, they will show you. To, I don't know whether they rebuilt it. Tawala Balewa had his own in Bauchi, but he borrowed money from bank because he was preparing to retire. He borrowed money from a bank to build a house in Kaduna. By the time he was killed, he did not pay back the money, so the house had to be sold to pay the bank. Michael Opara ran away from the country during the Civil War. By the time he was coming back, there was no house for him to live with his wife and children. His people in Umahaya had to contribute money to build him a four-bedroom bungalow. Several crises happened and were all able to overcome. The political leaders got together and started discussing how to achieve independence for Nigeria. Constitutional conferences were held both in Nigeria and in London, and they cooperated with one another. During one of the constitutional conferences, Sardona complained to Chief Awolo that one of his followers saw him twice and, he, and did not greet, greet him. Chief Awolo went round and got hold of that member. He happened to be on the delegation. And he dragged him before the Sardona and told him, kneel down and greet the Sardona. Next time, if you see the Sardona and, and you don't greet him, I will dismiss you from my party. I'm not running a party of irresponsible people. Imagine an opposition leader doing this. Trying to track Nigerian history from 1960, one thing that strikes you is the story of national of unity and of transcendental leadership. Um, whether it was the NPC in the north with Ahmad Bello and Tafa Bello, or the NCNC in the southeast, or the Action Group in the southwest. Um, but these were led by the mega leaders. For me, the real remarkable story was the small parties. Um, and it begins, from my point of view, with Joseph Taka in the Middle Belt and the question of minorities, which continues to be an issue for Nigeria to date. And when you go back to the period before independence in 1957, 56, 57, the minorities had looked at the future of Nigeria, particularly following the discovery of oil in 1956 in the Loiberi. And what struck them was the possibility that a post-colonial Nigeria would not have space for the minorities. And so there was that agitation for protection of minorities. In 1959, after the elections, no one party emerged victorious or having an overall majority to enable it to form a government alone. There must be a coalition. NCNC and the Action Group wanted to go into coalition. Then some well-meaning people, well-meaning leaders waited 
into the crisis and pointed out that if these two organizations, both of them from the South, joined together, they would elbow out the North. And that might encourage even the North to, to secede. And of course, they spoke to Chief uh, uh, to, to Dr. Mnaun Diazukwe. And in fairness, I must say, he did very well because of all the political leaders, he was the one that made the greatest contribution towards the achievement of independence in Nigeria. But he agreed to accept the co to, to, to go into coalition with the NPC and to play a second role. Mm. He became a ceremonial head of state and allowed the NPC to produce an executive prime minister. So again, we overcame that crisis. The prime minister wanted to form a national government after, the, after independence. But of course, Chief Aulio said he was not interested. He wanted to remain at an opposition leader. He wanted to give an effective and constructive opposition leadership, which he did in fairness to him. Within the NCNC, there was a misunderstanding between Chief, between Chief Mbadwe and Dr. Namdi Azukwe. Dr. Namdi Azukwe was still the leader of the party. He was president of the country, albeit ceremonial. And Kyo Mbadwe was the leader of the NCNC ministers in the coalition government. As a result of that misunderstanding, Dr. Mbadwe was dismissed from the NCNC and was dropped as a minister. The prime minister, Sabu Katafa created a post in his office and appointed Kyo Mbadwe. He said such a highly placed person should not be kept idle. The country needed his experience. The Prime Minister wanted to buy time in order to reconcile Dr. Azukwe and Dr. Mbadwe. While Dr. Mbadwe was in his office as the liaison officer for Africa, the Prime Minister kept going backwards and forwards between Dr. Namdi Azukwe and Dr. Mbadwe until he succeeded in reconciling them. Mbadi was, re, was, was forgiven and was readmitted into the party. He was reappointed minister and made the leader of the NCNC ministers again. But one would ask, why should the Prime Minister bother himself? One would expect that the Prime Minister would exploit that misunderstanding to promote, to further the interest of his own party. He did not. He was thinking of the nation. He wanted understanding, coalition, and so on. Now, because the UMBC was that was that entrenched and that dedicated to its ideas, in 1961, Jay Stalker was the first Nigerian to be subjected to a treason trial. And before the military coups, the first Nigerian who underwent a trial for treason was Jay Stalker. That was in 1961. Now, while he was in detention for treason in 1961, the NPC dissolved the, the, you had elections into the Northern Region House of Assembly. And the NPC was hoping to win the elections in, the, in Tivland in particular and wipe him out. Uh, but what happened, he did not, the UMBC did not just win the elections, they got Hashim Imam from, um, from uh, Meduguri, who could not contest because he had been run out of town by the NPC to come to, uh, to, to Tivland and win. And that was a Kanuri man coming to Tivland and winning a seat in Tivland as a representative of central Tiv communities. Today, in today's Nigeria, that would not happen. I remember there was a report who said that um, three developing countries would 
in 15, 20 years join the developed parts of the world or the countries of the world, they would be at par. These three countries were India, Brazil, and Nigeria. Unfortunately for us, Brazil and Nigeria established their defense industries the same year. But where are we now? We are marking time. Because we lost the good leadership that we started with. As a result of the coup in 1966, we lost the Fab Alewa. If he had, he had lived, would have continued with the good work he started and would have been the same as India or Brazil today. Unfortunately, that did not happen. We ruled ourselves. Yes. We, ran, we ran our parliaments. We ran our houses. Then what went wrong if Nigeria is worse now? Selfishness. Selfishness and greed. Unless they know the correct story, they know the true story, they cannot hold on to the, in the country. Chief Aolo went around and got hold of that member. He happened to be on the delegation and he dragged him before the Sardona and told him, kneel down and greet the Sardona. Next time, if you see the Sardona and, and you don't greet him, I will dismiss you from my party. I'm not running a party of irresponsible people. Imagine an opposition leader doing this. Oh yes, I used to go a lot to the markets. I used to go to the, until I stopped being a first lady. I was going to the markets. I was going to the markets, without, and I would go without escort. Senseless killing of officers within the armed forces. It was not the killing of the politicians, but you had officers killing officers and glorying in it. Um, and these were not just, it was not officers killing officers, it was kill, officers killing their friends. I don't understand how the soldiers did it. We truly believe that for us to, understand, for us to be able to shape the future of Nigeria, we have to understand where we came from. Yeah.